Hey everybody, this is Gary Kay, and obviously you're watching a video version of my Rants and Rays podcast. It's post Infocom, and I love doing product demos. and And in fact, uh, as you can see, I'm joined with Bob Canelia from Black Magic Design. Hey, Bob, how are you? Great. Thanks for having us. Hey, thanks for being on today. Uh, we shot uh, a handful of videos at the Black Magic Design booth at Infocom. I'll link those in the description of this podcast. Of course, you can go to our Infocom coverage at raypubs.com slash Infocom 2019. Just type in Black Magic in the video search window. And um, y'all had a y'all had a packed booth. It was tough to get through your booth. Uh, I know the show was packed, but your booth was especially packed. Yeah, it, you know, it's interesting. We've been doing that show was, I don't know how many years now, but seven or eight maybe. Uh, and uh, our, I guess our presence there has grown uh, in the sense that more and more people know who we are. So we have, you know, uh, customers and system integrators and everybody showing up and, and talking about what's new and, and telling us what they're already doing, which is cool. Yeah, and one of the cool products that you're going to show me today that, was, that you're going to demo today is the ATEM Constellation 8K. Um, and uh, tell us a little bit about that product and what it does. Yeah, so the Constellation 8K is uh, an interesting uh, switcher because, um, and I, actually I'm using it right now to put uh, this key up, so uh, I'm not actually at NAB uh, 2018. Um, but, uh, and I have my little live logo, but I'm going to switch off now and, and move over to some slides about it. And then I'll get through to the switcher. So the switcher itself uh, is part of our 8K workflow. And what we've done is um, we, we basically have developed a, uh, a product that is more than just 8K. So even though the title says 8K, uh, in 8K, it is a 10 input uh, 1ME switcher. Now, the thing about that is in order to get an input in 8K, you need four 12G cables. So it's quad to make it. So by doing that, there's 40 uh, connections on the back. So uh, there's a hyperdecker, get back to these. Let me go back to the, where's my, there it is. So there's 40 inputs on the back, right? So the thing about that is you, we decided, well, wait a minute. If we have, if we're doing an 8K, we can do it in HD or, or ultra HD as a 40 input switcher. So now you got 40 inputs, you got four MEs, and, and then it's just a massive switcher. So in the 8K mode, you have 10 inputs and six uh, outputs. Uh, you know, aux outputs, they could be anything. Well, it's 24 outputs and 40 inputs. So it's, it becomes a really a massive ultra HD and HD switcher. And I so think that's- 4K. Really So in 4K, it's 40 in, 24 out. In 8K, it's 10 in, uh, eight out. Uh, 10 in, six out. Or sorry, 10 in, six out, yes. And, yeah. and, and so, all the, obviously, in looking at the back panel, it's all SDI. Yeah, so all SDI, um, but the good thing about it is, and um, it, it, is that any input you put into it, it will match the output resolution. So, uh, for instance, today, I'm, I'm, I'm using it um, with, a, you know, some, uh, 4K sources, some HD sources, and 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 it all uh, matches internally, and that's really important, especially in the live environment where guys are just uh, trying. You know, if they're they're using the switcher, let me go back to the my other slide here. Like, you know, they're using it here in a venue. They don't necessarily know that all of the sources are going to match. So right. this way, they get to uh, you know just take in a, a random source and know it's just going to work without having to use a converter. So that that's really a big deal. And that makes it basically completely seamless. You don't have any of the sw the glitchy switching or anything like that as well. That that's exactly right. So you know it frame syncs the inputs and and all that. Um, and you know in this picture we show that the two me panel. Uh, we also have a, a one me panel that you can connect to it, and uh, that's the advanced panel. Um, so if I switch back over to uh, to me, I'm going to switch over. And so that's me using the one me panel here live. Okay. And I can address any of the four MEs from, from this panel. So, but not only can I use the panel, but I can also use the software. So the software um, that comes with all ATEM switchers is, is no different in, in this case. So if I uh, switch back, so now here's the software that I'm using. Okay. Um, and and uh, I can address all four MEs um, through the software. I can go to any of the MixFX buses. And I have macros here that I was, you know, 
Uh, so like for instance, in the macros, these are great too, because certain things you just do all the time. Like you see that one says Chroma start. That was, I, that was the one I made for me <laughs> so that I knew that I was, that, that it was all set up and I didn't have to start playing around with the Chroma key. Um, but if I go to some other ones, I can, I can say, um, this one says, uh, news box setup too, right? So what that means, I'll just switch over. So that's what I set up. So this is a, a two box switch. Um, and then I can bring one of those. Uh, full screen like that. So now my hand's back here um, and I can go back to it. So uh, all these macros are capable in uh, all of the flavors, whether it's HD, uh, 4K or, 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 or AK Ultra HD, all yeah. of them, right? So Now that, that physical controller in front of you is called what? What is that controller in front of you called? Right. So this is the ATEM uh, advanced panel, advanced one ME panel. So okay. uh, we had an original panel uh, called the ATEM uh, one ME uh, panel, uh, broadcast panel. Uh, that was from the original design that uh, we bought from Echolab. Yeah. But this one is all black magic. Uh, it comes, it's um, a lot, uh, I'll show you, I'll spin like Vanna White. Um, so you uh, basically have a panel that is really sturdy. It, it, it can address all four MEs. Uh, these are the macros that'll highlight so you can switch different panels. I can, I can change all the colors of the buttons, uh, catching a light there, but I could change the colors of the buttons or the mnemonics on here. And uh, so this panel is great because it works with any of our, our switchers. Uh, there are some people that use a two or four ME switcher and they'll put two of these in line because they'll have one guy running one ME, one guy running another ME, and because they're all networked together, it's easy to do that kind of uh, uh, thing. And so we, um, and, and this panel was a lot less expensive than the original. The original was around $5,000, this is $3,000. So uh, economies of scale, it's also, it's, it's heavy, but it's uh, sturdy. I mean, you know, this is the kind of gear that you just throw in a, in a case yeah. and uh, take, it, take it everywhere, so. And what you're showing me on the iPad, uh, well, I, I don't know if it's an iPad or computer version. Was yeah, the, the basically iMac, yeah. you're, you're you're basically emulating four of those in a sort of a digital uh, um, version of it, right? I mean, right. you're you're able to you're able to have control of four MEs simultaneously on one screen, rather than on the physical panel, you are pressing a, uh, four different buttons to decide which of the four MEs you're controlling. That that's correct, and um, yeah, so the. Uh, yeah, the real estate of the GUI is a little bit more expansive, but all, but then again, the good thing about when you're using the um, uh, the control panel, go back to it. Uh, I'll know exactly what ME I'm on by pressing the button, so I don't have right. and it's a hard lit button all the time instead of being lost in a software menu somewhere. Going, oh, I'm not sure what I'm doing here. So that part is really um, is great. So do you to, see? So it sounds like you see the Constellation 8K for now at least being used primarily as a 4k like supercharged 4k uh you know multi-viewing multi-imaging switcher yeah well you know what it is is it's um there are certain 8k applications straight away so right. next year's summer olympics whatever yeah, those guys sure. need they need they need that kind of power but if you're uh you know and it gives flexibility because you're you're able to use this switcher in a lot of different environments that um, that that can switch between um, frame rates and, and resolutions. Uh, I, I've been at, I was at a concert recently, hey, and by the way, I love yeah. the picture of your switcher, but I want to see you since you're talking to me now. How's that? Can ah, you, sure, I understand. Well, I'll go back to me. <laughs> How's uh, that? Yeah, where do we go? Um, where did it go? Player two. Oh, you know what? I don't know why I didn't just do this. Boom, there that's you why go. I had the I see, there you go. Uh, so I'm sorry to interrupt. You're saying that you that's quite right. A concert. Yeah. So at a concert, I see that the wall behind the band is, you know, a, a big LED wall, and you know that that probably could take any resolution. Yeah. Uh, it's just they don't have anything 8K to feed it. Whereas with this switcher, even if you had 4K cameras, you could get an 8K output to that wall, and right. so. Those kind of that kind of flexibility is there. The other thing is it's nine thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars for the ATEM, which, while a lot for Blackmagic uh, products, uh, it is not a lot of money um, in in the switcher world, especially for yeah. something that's this capable. It, you know, yeah. in 
ultra HD in, in 8k, you still have, um, super source, which is the four DVEs, uh, plus a DVE in trans in, in transition. So when you, so when you get into say, um, you get, you get two of those in, um, in, uh, in, um, 4k. So you'd have, you could have eight, nine boxes. I, you know, it's just insane how many, how many you have. So from that perspective, uh, you know, it's a lot of power. But the other thing that it really gives is the flexibility on the outputs because generally people get to venues and they need a lot of outputs to get to different monitors and whatnot. Yeah. You can basically send anything out on it. We don't even call it an aux bus anymore. It's just, it's just an output. It could be anything. So that really gives you a lot of, you know, it's almost like having a router at the same time, which is, um, which is great. Yeah. And, and uh, my, my impression of this whole generation of 8k products that's coming out is that what we're seeing today, the way that things are being presented to the public, for example, the, the application you just gave in a concert venue with a large led in the back is totally different than the way people are going to be presenting it five years from now, because right now they're thinking, Oh, well, this is a higher resolution version of what we had before and it's replacing what they're having. And so they're thinking about it as a linear replacement rather than as a nonlinear creation tool, because right. Like even though you and I understand it, Hey, you can take that large screen and turn it into a, a multi imaging digital canvas. Most people right. aren't thinking that way. They're thinking, Oh, well, this is the better version of what I had. So they kind of, we, we kind of have this time where we're as an industry going to have to educate people on what, how you can change your workflows to do things differently, to present content differently, more creatively rather than just bigger. Well, and, and that's the thing because when you have super high resolution like this uh, in a concert venue, you could put up all the cameras on that back, you know, so that everybody could see At the same time. time. Exactly. And, so and the, in native resolution. Uh, absolutely. I so, was thinking about that earlier. I was thinking, like, imagine this. You take one of your 8K cameras, right? Yep. Oh, you disappear. Watch that. There so there's yeah. me. No, but yeah. so there's a multi view. That's yeah. a multi view on a multi view on a multi view. And, and yeah. you know, but that kind of theory to be able to put out that many outputs all over the place is, is always uh, uh, is it's something to look at anyway. That's for sure. All right. So then, like here, I was thinking about this last night. I was listening to uh, I was driving and I was listening to a, uh, a talk radio show, and they were talking about something that was loosely related to our industry. And I was thinking. Well, you know, in the why don't why don't basketball arenas, for example, put up a 8K camera, shoot the whole the whole um, floor, and then just move the the broadcast signal back and forth inside the 8K image, and broadcast basically a 4K image, a 4K resolution image without having to use two cameras. Like, I mean, this sort of changes everything. You could have an 8K camera and pick out what you want and still get a bunch of native 1080 images. I mean, you know, in, in 8K you get 16 native 1080 images out of it. Yeah, yeah, well, and, and it's interesting because, you know, they're already using 4K cameras to pull HD replays out of. Right. And so this is just the same thing over again because it's yeah. four times that, you know, it's 8K is four times 4K, which is four times HD. And as you say, you get into 16 tiles yeah. of, uh, of that kind of resolution, which, you know, we had an 8K display at Infocom and we put our multi-view on it. Well, at that point, each quadrant was a 4K signal. I mean, it was really yeah. impressive. How big was your display, by the way? Because it's hard to find an 8K display, isn't it? Yeah, there aren't many 8K displays. Yeah. And we had a sharp, it was an 80-something inch. 84-inch, yeah. Sharp yeah. 84-inch, yeah. Right. But the thing yeah. about 8K really is, I think, personally, that the only way that you're going to get benefit from it is to have it be the size of our wall. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, full size behind me. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna go out and buy a 55 inch 8K TV and get no, my. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna notice any difference. And even at home, it would be tough to have an 8K. I'd have to put it on my neighbor's wall. But, um, but, but I think that the 8K and higher resolution like that, as you say, what what it turns into is if you if you do have a wall and then you can carve out 4K images on it you can watch four 4k basketball games at the same time on an 8k wall that's when you're really starting to get yeah. and that's what i mean like the integrators have to kind of think differently because when a, a sports bar comes to you a big chain comes to you and says we want to replace everything instead yeah. of you saying okay we'll replace everything with the newest version you should say yeah. have you thought about 
instead of doing yeah. this video wall the way you did, we could literally put up, you know, and, uh, and that's what people have to kind of rethink the workflow and the way that they present things. Cause, cause the customer isn't going to, it's not going to dawn on the customer in most cases that this is even possible. And, and no. I think even in the integrator, this is so new that they're not thinking about that. They're just thinking it as a replacement for 4k or 4k as a replacement for 1080 or whatever. So right. yeah, this is, makes sense. So you actually did launch quite a few new products at, uh, at Infocom. We actually shot, uh, like I said, a handful of videos in your booth uh, and did a, uh, an interview with you obviously as well. All yep. that is on the rave pubs microsite. Um, and, uh, I would encourage people to go look because one of the things we didn't talk about today is the Terranex mini SDI to HDMI 8k HDR. Yeah. Um, that's going to be big. I think that's got a, a really interesting niche. Um, after that video was shot, we were looking at it in the booth at night and we're like, we have like 10 applications for that one box that we can think of that we yeah. personally have. So that's going to be a hot one. So I encourage people to go back and look at that. I, I think that it may be an overlooked product, uh, but it, you know, considering all the other stuff that you had. Well, you know, and uh, sometimes they all get overshadowed. I mean, um, uh, even if, uh, let me see if I can do this quickly without uh, looking too goofy. There we go. Uh, yeah. Even the, uh, this is the, the 8K deck. So, you know, uh, the HyperDeck and um, it's all part of that same workflow. We had the, the, the uh, Terranix Mini and there's two versions of the Terranix Mini too. Um, we, we, we announced uh, a new version. Whoops. Where'd I go? I blew my key. You have too many choices. <laughs> I have too many choices. That happens. Where's my media player? Ah, it's so. Um, let me go back to my uh, macros, maybe. So anyway, um, the thing that that kills me is that uh, is that we have basically that box, and then there's a second version of it to deal with the new um, Mac displays. Yeah. Uh, so it's AK to to DisplayPort. Uh, but Apple's not going to be the only one with DisplayPort either. So it right. really giving people more choices for a lot more monitors. Now, the calibration thing is the real key to that product, as sure. you know. And yeah. it's the one that's not so obvious right away. Some, most people just think it's a Terranix mini converter that goes from, you know, uh, you know that does 8K. But that's not, it, it, it's more than that. And I think um, you're right. I, it's, uh, it's hard on our booth. We get crowded with a lot of different products and features and you know, cameras and switchers and things like that. But that one in and of itself is one that uh, everybody uh, will need in the post world for sure. And uh, just in display period, just because uh, so many of these displays that people use now are consumer type displays, but they could look a lot better if uh, people calibrated them. Exactly. That, that's the product. Uh, yeah, I was excited about when I saw, um, I appreciate this demo too, uh, especially being willing to do it in real time and uh, without having <laughs> Without any post production, yeah. but uh, but it, I mean yeah. this was uh, great for the the people in our industry. They love this kind of stuff, and uh, of course you can go to blackmagicdesign.com to see all their products. <laughs> you have the probably the widest range of of, uh, of production products in one place, and the most affordable. I mean, I, I don't think anyone even would. I think even your competitors would sometimes are like, I don't understand how they can do that. <laughs> um, so so yeah, it's a good problem to have for you, but. Uh, but in any case, all of our coverage at raypubs.com slash infocom 2019. And of course, Bob Canelia, thank you very much for joining me again. I appreciate it. I've enjoyed uh, doing this pre and post uh, infocom director of sales and, uh, and operations at, at uh, sales operations in North America for Black Magic Design. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having us and I look forward to uh, catching up again down the road. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day.